Hey guys, this is Jerry. So I'm a big fan of Rebel Media. They've been making some mistakes recently. I called out Faith Goldie, and today I'm gonna call out Gavin McInnes. He made this video called, Some Myths About Native Americans Are True. One of the things he says in here is that, basically Native Americans didn't grow up with sugar and their bodies can't handle sugar. So basically he's taken another um, approach to the thrifty gene hypothesis. What the thrifty gene hypothesis says is that Native Americans, for some reason or another, they aren't as able to metabolize efficiently when they're eating too much. In other words, they store fat too much, they might not handle simple sugars, as well as let's say Asians or Hispanics or white people. I became interested in this issue when I was in college, I took a Native American history class and I I've always been all about food and about eating and I, for my final project in the class, I said, you know what, let's look at this. Let's look at Native American food. Let's look at, okay, why is there such a prevalence of obesity? For those of you who don't know, Native Americans at the highest percentage uh, rate of obesity compared to all other ethnicities, all race, so to speak, all of the races in America. I don't know if this is the same in Canada. I'm assuming it's the same. So one of the things then, if we're gonna research this issue and really get to the bottom of it, let's just first figure out, okay, do Native Americans not handle overnutrition or overeating the same way? Do their bodies respond differently? I have a bunch of studies. I remember reading the study back I took, a, after my Native American history class, I took a class on um, neuroscience and it basically, it was trying to figure out what pathways in the brain contributed to different types of behavior, different types of bodily responses, so to speak. There's an article here that took Caucasian Americans and then Pima Indians. Um, Pima Indians are a group of Indians in America with very, very high propensity for obesity. What the study did was they fed both groups way more than they usually would eat during the day. And then they basically measured, okay, how would their bodies respond? So how would you measure how a body would respond, let's say if it eats too much? Well, it turns out, you know, your body wants to keep its levels the same, right? It does, if it's eating too much and it's not actively expending the energy, that's not good. So the body has ways of expending and getting rid of excess energy. And one of the ways that your body surprisingly gets rid of energy, let's say if you eat too much, is something called diet-induced thermogenesis. And with diet-induced thermogenesis, it sounds like a complicated word, but we can break it down. It's actually very easy. So thermogenesis, thermo heat genesis, like creating. Diet induced thermogenesis is basically when you eat a lot, the very complicated pathways in your brain will sense that there's too much nutrition in your body. So it'll cause your body to produce heat. So that's called diet induced thermogenesis. There's other ways of measuring energy expenditure, of course. And I um, mean, this study, besides measuring diet induced thermogenesis, they also measured, um, what's called um, their respiratory quotient. So how much oxygen were they breathing in? How much carbon dioxide were they breathing out? Because you know, if they're, if they're breathing in more oxygen and breathing out more carbon dioxide, they're using more of that through whatever body activities to expend energy. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. You guys can read it yourself. There's some cool tables here too. But basically, there was no difference between how the Pima Indians and the Caucasians in this study, how their body reacted once they consumed excess calories. It's an easy explanation to say that, yeah, Native Americans have a high uh, propensity for obesity because there's something wrong in their genes that causes them to store more fat because of whatever evolutionary advantage it used to give them. But this study shows the Pima Indian tribe, which if there's any tribe that could have the thrifty gene, this would be a good candidate because they're very high in obesity rates, but their bodies reacted the same. We're all human, right? We're more similar than we're different. This is the really interesting part in my opinion because you know, I love studying what people eat. But so if there is no thrifty gene, what is causing these higher obesity rates? 
in Native Americans. The study I did back in college, I found a lot of these really, really cool data points that you could find about what these Native American groups were eating nowadays. Right, traditionally, um, there's a study called the Dung Study, which basically studied the droppings of our Neil Neolithic or Paleolithic, basically very old ancestors of us humans. And they found that the ancient diet was surprisingly varied. You know, we, we ate all kinds of animals, we ate all kinds of roots, we ate all kinds of vegetables and fruits. And so traditionally, the diet of Native Americans has been very rich, very nutritious. So I've always been interested in saying, okay, so what have we been eating now? So one of the first studies I found, these are the top foods that this Native American group in those four days ate. Now the number one food they ate those four days, they ate soda. That was number one. The number two food they ate in frequency was coffee. The number three food that they ate was white bread. I don't see anything nutritious out of these top three. Let's keep going. Maybe there's something nutritious about the fourth one. So the number four food they ate was butter and margarine. The number fifth food they ate was tea. Well, you know, some teas could be healthy. The number, am I at six? Yeah, the number six food they ate was diet soda. Nothing could come out of that. And then it's chips and then it's candies, and then it's sugar substitutes, and then it's sugar, and then it's wheat bread, and then it's french fries, and then it's fried egg, and then it's salad dressing. The, more salad dressing than salad. <laughs> you know, those people, I was like that when I was younger. Fuck it, I fucking hated eating um, raw vegetables, right? So I drench on the salad dressing. Okay, so this was one study. You can tell they're eating stuff that's high in fats, high in carbohydrates and then very low in anything nutrient wise or um, fiber wise. So let's go to the next study. This was actually some basically a lot of the same people. They did another study a year later and this time they wanted to find out more. So what did they eat the most? Number one was coffee and tea. Number two was soda. Number three was butter and margarine and fats. And then it's white bread, diet soda, coffee creamers. Okay, so not good. Let's look at um, let's look at something else. Oh my God, these are these are one to six year olds. Let's say let's see what these one to six year olds in this um, Oklahoma Native American community ate the most frequent. That is in this graph instead of frequency, what what this table lists is the the percentage of their energy intake. So they drank whole milk. The one to six year olds drank whole milk. That was number one. Um, and then cheese, cheese spread, cheese dip, and then 1% to 3% milk. And then it was bread, bagels, buns, rolls, flour, tortillas, and then it was potato chips, crackers, and then it was non-diet soft drinks, and then it was corn tortillas, and then it was hot dogs. I don't see anything good in this. Let's look at another category. The per by percentage of carbohydrates, let's rank them. Um, the, the number one thing that they ate was non-diet soft drinks and then it's bread, bagels, buns. Okay, nothing good there. Let's look at percent of protein. They got most of their protein from whole milk and cheese. Well, protein, okay, we can look over that. Percentage of fats, they got most of their fats from cheese, whole milk, hot dogs. I don't see anything good here. And I found a study just for Gavin here. Um, this is Native Americans in Ontario and they looked at their food consumption habits. So here we have, um, all you have to know is the higher the numbers, the more they ate basically. And not surprisingly, very like the Native American groups in America. There's lots of bread and butter consumption, lots of tea consumption, breakfast foods, junk foods, low bush foods as in lean meat, you know, gamey meat, the type of meat that you know, is high in protein, not as high in bad fats. And then um, not, they are not eating that many um, vegetables at all. I don't see any fruits here, so I don't know if they studied fruits. And then let's look at, this, is, this chart says specific patterns of food consumption and preparation are associated with, so this is about food preparation. Interesting. So how much fat was used in food? A lot. And then fat was used was added after the food. So it's like in addition to, in addition to using the fat to prepare, 
the food, they also maybe for butter or something added more fat. There seems to be more evidence to show that Native American groups are just not eating the right foods to stay healthy. Why is it? Why is it that Native American groups are not eating the right foods to stay healthy? This is something that actually supports like the whole conservative view of the world. And if only Gavin McInnes just did more research or talked to his wife, he said in a video his wife is actually Native American. So if he talked to his wife a little bit more, maybe they would have brought this up. This actually supports everything about conservatives sort of stances on small government. And there's a study here, and I remember reading the study back in the day, and it basically looked at what types of food assistance Native American groups got. I think something like 31% of Native Americans in America, that is, live below the poverty line. So in America, we, we have welfare and we like to help those in need, which is, you know, it's something noble in us. But the problem with any sort of food subsidy, you know, food stamps, whatever, food assistance is that a lot of times the stuff that you could buy with those food stamps it's like the stuff that no one wants, right? It's like the, the shitty stuff that the government subsidizes that's high and high fructose corn syrup and all this stuff. It's, if you look at America, for example, obesity rates are correlated with poverty rates, right? The, the less income a person makes, the more likely he or she is gonna be overweight or obese. This study looked at, so what types of foods were Native Americans getting at least this tribe. This was a tribe um, in Round Valley. So I assume it's somewhere in California, I believe. I don't know. Let me let me do research right now. Where's Round Valley? Yeah, it looks like Round Valley somewhere in California. So anyways, let's look at the type of food that Native Americans get. A lot of meats, which is good. We got a lot of grains, but then we also have a lot of beverages Right, we have sweeteners, we have all this well, like orange juice. It's not oranges, but we got orange juice, which of course is high in sugar. We have apple juice, we have honey, we have grape juice. Anything that's juiced has a lot more sugar than if you just ate the fruit. And if you look at the fruits and vegetables, it says here, it's all canned unless otherwise noted. You know, to can, you know, to preserve something in a can, you either over sweeten it, right? Like a canned fruit, it's usually way over sweetened to prevent bacteria. If you put enough sugar in something, it'll kill off any bacteria because the bacteria, if you study the cell, the bacteria cells, all the water will flow outwards. It's called osmosis. Anyways, so, and usually vegetables, if they're canned, they usually have a lot of salt or something in it to preserve it. So basically these food supplement programs for um, these two California tribes, it's giving them a lot of crap a lot of low quality food. And this is a perfect argument for conservatives. It's like, look at look government intervention here. It's, it's causing people to be worse off because it's leading to very bad food consumption and bad eating habits, which is causing diabetes and obesity, etc. So my point in calling out Gavin McInnes when he starts saying things that imply that Native Americans genetically are just just different or they they their bodies because of certain genes or whatever make them unable to handle sugar or store too much fat. There's the right way to argue your conservative viewpoints and there's the wrong way. And the right way is the evidence is right here, right? We always criticize liberals for not looking at evidence. The difference between what Gavin McInnes is doing and what liberals are doing is liberals just use their emotions. Gavin McInnes is, he uses his emotions and then he tries to vindicate it with pseudoscience. That's all I have to say. I mean, I'm still gonna watch Rebel Media. I mean, this is only their second strike. I think give them at least another chance, right? And for those of you who in the comment section might say something like, yeah, fuck Rebel Media. Well, we need people to say stupid stuff like this because because Gavin said something stupid like this, it made me dig up all this research I had. And now we can get to the bottom of things and we can move forward and hopefully we'll address the actual problems, which is big government and the fact that a lot of times government intervention does not do the good that it's meant to. I thank you guys so much for watching and leave a comment, press like, press subscribe. And if anyone from Rebel Media or any of your fans see it, 
I'm welcome to your criticisms. Just give me some evidence otherwise. You know, if you if you show that I'm wrong, that actually there's proof that Native Americans do respond differently to diet changes that I haven't found, then send it to me. But don't be like, yeah, you're just a fucking liberal shell or um I don't, I don't know, what, what do conservatives usually say when they use their emotions? We don't need your kind in our, in our movement or something. I don't know. Just don't use your emotions. Use your ability to do research and debate me. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Talk to you guys next time.